Running a 5K race is like running the race of life. We need to train for the 5K race, and we also need to train for life. Now, I used to run a lot of races before I hurt my knee, actually. You know, my whole family ran together. My dad ran races, my sister, my brother-in-law, my nephews, my kids. Even some of my friends would run in races together with me. It was a lot of fun. But do you know why we were able to have fun running those races? Because we were prepared. We were prepared. But what would happen if we got up off our couches today and decided to just go and run a 5K race? Ouch, that's what I think. We would not be prepared. We would probably not even be able to finish the race, and if we did, we might not do our very best or even well, and we might even hurt ourselves in the process. We need to train our bodies before we can run the race so we can handle the hills and the valleys and the obstacles that get in our way. Well, the Bible says that life is like running a race. We need to train ourselves on the inside to be prepared for the hills and the valleys of life. Like right now, in this pandemic, some of us feel like we we're not prepared for this valley of life and maybe are even struggling through it. So what do we do when we're struggling? We keep training, we get back on track, we keep our eyes on the goal. So what's our goal of our faith? Our goal of our faith is to live forever with Jesus. plans for me are good. You hold my future. You're working all the time. You're the mountain mover. From sunrise to sunset till the sun comes back up again. You're by my side. You started a good work in me. I know that you will complete it. You will see
What are you doing, John? Trying to finish 5K. You know that's not how 5Ks work, right? What? There's a lot of fiber in this. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Yeah, now that's how 5K is supposed to work. Way to go. I'm John. I'm Brandon. And welcome, welcome to the So and So Show. Brandon and I have committed to run a 5K. Why? I'm not sure. Someone thought it was a good idea. Ah, uh -huh. well, when you commit to running a race, you need to make a plan on how to get yourself ready and stick to that plan. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do one of those training apps that you can get on your phone. There's there's one called Couch to 5K that mm -hmm. looks really good, but then John said- I said we couldn't do that. No app is gonna prepare us for the ups and downs, the peaks and valleys, or the ebbs and flows of running a race. Have you ever actually run a race? No, no. but that's, that's beside the point. Racing is like life. You never know what life is gonna throw at you. Mm -hmm. It's unpredictable. Yeah. So I developed a training course myself that will take us through unpredictable situations in multiple climates, so we'll be prepared for anything the real race might throw at us. Okay, but you know that we're running the 5K in the spring on a city street. Okay, so let's talk multiple. more practice. Come on, buddy. Let's go to the course. Hi knees, hi knees. Sigh. Okay, why, why are we doing this? There's no way we're gonna be running in the snow, right? Because you have to be prepared, Brandon. When you commit to something, you have to be ready for any outcome. And we have had some late spring snowstorms. When? You know, in the spring of 1978. It is not gonna snow, John. <laughs> you can't predict the weather, Brandon. And switch. Oh. Okay. oh, now we're in the desert? This will never happen. What, we, we, we can make a wrong turn in a race and end up in the desert? Oh, flying cactus! Ah! Oh, oh, oh. oh, and switch! Oh! Seriously, John? <laughs> this is getting out of hand! Practice! Wow! Makes! Oh. Perfect! Oh. Oh. And switch! <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, this is more like it. This is what we should be training for. Wait for it. I want what? my two dollars! Ow! What was that? <laughs> it's a paper boy. He's ruthless. Huh? Oh, heads up! What? Ow! <laughs> Can we stop now, please? I think we're prepared! Two dollars! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're that prepared. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Oh. Look out! Whoa! Hey guys, uh, what's going on? Oh, we're training for a 5K. Yeah, we're practicing commitment, duck. Oh. Ah. <coughs> well, that's what I'm talking about today. I mean, not running and dodging newspapers, but the commitment part. Well, great, take it away, Kellen. This comes from the book of 1 Corinthians. Now, 1 Corinthians was a letter the Apostle Paul wrote to the Jesus followers in the city of Corinth. Paul wrote the letter to encourage people to stay committed to living the way Jesus would want them to live. This letter is like a speech a coach might give a team to really get them pumped up. It starts like this. In a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. You know that, don't you? So run in a way that will get you the prize. Pretty inspiring stuff, but I think we could do it even better. Help me out, cheer squad. Hey, Jackie. Yeah, Dee Dee? Are you ready to commit? I was born ready. Mm -hmm. Who is ready to run this race? I am. Who is ready to run this race? That's me. When you are running, here's what we advise. You should run in a way that will get you the prize. Awesome.
awesome. But just to be clear, I don't think Paul was telling us to go out and literally start running. Really? Really? Really. I think Paul was comparing our lives to a race. When you're in a race, you do the best you can, right? It takes commitment and practice. But when you're running with a goal in mind, the finish line, it's the same with your life. You should try to do the best in life. It'll take commitment and it'll take practice. But the goal should be to live your life like there's a prize at the end. Now, Paul gave us a hint in what that prize could be. He wrote, all who take part in the games train hard. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Now, the people reading this letter in Paul's day would have known the kind of crown you could win in a race. It would be made of leaves or pine needles, and it wouldn't last very long. But Paul wrote that Jesus' followers should be running for a crown that will last forever. Take it, cheer squad. Yo, Jackie! Yes, it is! Do you want to win? Always! <laughs> Winning a race gives you a crown, but it will not. That's great, cheer squad. Now that we know the kind of race we're training for, the question is, how do we train? How do you practice life? Well, you can start with these four words. Hear, pray, talk, and live. Hear means we should practice hearing from God by reading the Bible or listening for his wisdom. Pray means we should practice talking to God, telling him how great he is and asking him for help and forgiveness. Talk is practicing talking about God with others. It's asking questions when we don't understand something and sharing the good news with people who haven't heard about Jesus. And live means we practice living for God. We try and think about God before every choice we make and do things in a way that honor Him. That's how you train for the race of life. Let's hear one more from the cheer squad. Ooh, hey Jackie. Yeah, Dee Dee? I'm ready to lace up my kicks and oh. run this race. I hear you. Let's slay this thing. On your mark, get set, go. Hey. Are you in? T-H-A-T race Are you gonna run like you want first place? Are you in T-H-A-T race? Then practice like you mean it and you'll be an ace Are you in T-H-A-T race? Remember four words that will help your case Are you in T-H-A-T race? Hear, pray, talk, live, now start today Thanks, cheer squad. Woo! Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I think I'm ready to run the 5K now. I think I'm ready for anything now. Two dollars! Oh, hoo -hoo! see? <laughs> it's true. When we train, when we practice, it prepares us for things, well, we might not see coming. You just gotta remember those four words. Hear, pray, talk, and live. That's great, Kellen. Hey, thanks. You bet. See you next time. Bye. You know, it just occurred to me, we should get one of those running apps you can get on your phone. It'd be way simpler. <laughs> you ever hear of Catch the 5K? Reveal the question. How does practice help you? John? I practice soccer all the time. And now I can do this. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Thank you. What about you? Uh, when, when I practice playing an instrument, it helps me learn it so well that I can do it without even thinking about it, like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who doesn't love the beautiful tones of the mouth harp? Right? Yeah. <laughs> what about you? How does practice help you? In sports or at school or in life. Talk about it together and we'll see you next week for a brand new show! Yay! <laughs> Name that tune. Okay. <laughs> it's the theme to name that tune. Yeah, you got it. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> oh, the paper boy's back! 
Oh! oh. Okay. No. No. Stop it. Switch. Give him his two dollars. I don't have the. I don't have any pockets. Oh no! This. Oh, we're getting attacked. They threw an ostrich. What? How dare you? They're flightless. Uh, okay. Ow. Switch. Uh, uh, oh good, a living room. Oh yeah. yeah let's see what's. Let's see what's on. Oh, a marathon. Oh, great. You ever been to a marathon? Can they do CG couches? So what have we learned? We know that having a healthy body is important. But having a healthy attitude and spirit is even more important in helping you get through life. You can be the most physically healthy person in the whole world and still not be a very nice person. But the Bible tells us that it's more important to be godly in every way that we can. And that means by how we act and the choices that we make. 1 Timothy 4 verse 8 says, Training the body has some value, but being godly has value in every single way. It promises help for the life that you are now living and the life that's to come. Thanks for joining us for church today. We're so glad that you are here. And I want you to get outside and train your body so you're healthy. But I also want you guys to take some time to pray and read your Bible and work on being a godly person.